before perspective. The electoral dust has largely settled after one of the biggest swings to the right in Brazil's modern history. On the first day of the new year, Jair Bolsonaro will officially pick up the reins of government after defeating the Workers' Party candidate in last month's presidential election. The sociologist Glauber Cesarino joins us now on set of four. Uh, more. thank you very much for coming in to talk to us. Thank you. Now, first of all, on Wednesday, Brazil, the breaking news today is that Brazil has pulled out of uh, its candidacy to host next year's um, climate, the UN Climate Change Conference, the COP25, uh, citing budgetary concerns, I believe. What's your uh, immediate reaction to that? Uh, just, is the, just an excuse to, to not uh, receive the, the COP25 because uh, it's, uh, it's known that uh, Bolsonaro is a climate sceptic. Uh, he's no, he, we know that uh, the, the new chancellor, the new minister of uh, foreign affairs in Brazil, is a climate sceptic. Uh, so it's the, the environmental issues for Bolsonaro is not really an issue. Uh, you can see that when he said, for instance, that we're going to increase land grabbing in Amazonia, we're going to put industries and uh, in factories in Amazonia. So it's, it's, it's not a, a, very, a very environmental president. Now, I hate to do this to you, but a few weeks ago, you took part in our debate programme here on France 24, and you told uh, François Picard that it was unlikely that Bolsonaro could win the presidential election. Uh, how then do you account for his victory? That's... Uh, yes, I said that. Uh, every, a lot of people said that also, because uh, we thought that Bolsonaro had a ceiling, like uh, Marine Le Pen in France and like others, uh, neo-fascists uh, around the world. But in the last week, of the campaign, the ceiling has uh, exploded. And uh, I, I think that one, one question, that uh, one element that explained that, it's the, the presence of the um, position, political position of uh, new Pentecostal church, because uh, he received a, a support, an actual support of uh, some pastors in Brazil at the last week that could uh, explain this kind of ceiling that uh, explodes in this moment. Also, I think the, the campaign uh, in the social media, WhatsApp especially, and the, it's a, a line campaign, but uh, the campaign also has, it's a very good campaign of the electoral point of view, because he touched everybody in Brazil, everybody that uh, wear social media to inform themselves, so I think these two elements conjugate can explain why this ceiling that we saw at the, at the time are, uh, ex had exploded. Now, you're a, um, usually a supporter of the left wing, uh, Lula and Haddad. Do you know how many leftist voters voted for Bolsonaro? It's difficult to say because um, the, the electors of PT and Haddad and Lula are not uh, exactly left wing uh, electors. They are uh, more like, um, they, they like the, the, the politic that uh, PT had, uh, had put in, in place, but uh, is not left-wing uh, by, only by that. So when Bolsonaro arrived without Lula in the campaign, without a charismatic figure like Lula, and said, I'm going to resolve all your problems with violence, with uh, conservative issues, with uh, uh, rights for the, for the, the minorities, that we, you, we don't like minorities because we are white, we are heterosexual, and we are uh, sexist one. So when he put all that together, he, can, he could uh, pick some of the electors that before voted for PT and voted for Lula, because they are not left-wing uh, in this sense. But do you think that Lula could have won if he hadn't been barred from standing? I, I think so, I think so. But um, because everything was playing the charismatic arena, you know, Bolsonaro, well, he's charismatic of a sociological point of view. Uh, he's not fun, <laughs> he's, a, he's a little bit a Shrek in a <laughs> bad disguise, but uh, he's charismatic one. Haddad is not a charismatic candidate. He, can, he, he grew up between the, the, the campaign, but he's not a charismatic figure that, like Lula. So if Lula were, were there, I think the, he, he could actually win the, this election. And that's why uh, we, th we think that uh, the justice and now the, the new justice minister, Moro, uh, play all his cards to stop Lula from being the candidate from PT. Let's talk now about um, Bolsonaro. He's set to be sworn in on January the 1st. What kind of president 
do you think he will be for Brazil? First of all, a messy one, because um, he, he say one thing in the morning and say another thing in the evening already. Uh, he don't have the he don't have the support of the elites in Brazil, 100% uh, support. Uh, for instance, he he don't play the, the coalition card. For instance, uh, his new ministry. For in, uh, we saw we saw already that uh, three of the new minister are from the same party in Brazil, but with a median party, who who is the the fourth party in the in the chamber in the low chamber. So it's, it's a little complicated between the elites to put all the government in one sense and not uh, distribute uh, the ministries and the secretaries and all that. From the perspective of the, the people and social movements especially, it's going to be a very, I think so, uh, a very authoritarian government because he all also said uh, many times that he's going to uh, prohibit social movements, prohibit gathering and going to attack legally attack uh, social movements, even NGOs like Greenpeace and Human Rights Watch. There are not uh, uh, revolutionary parties. <laughs> we are all agreed. We can all agree to that. And um, in the same sense, he's going to try to to prohibit all kind of, uh, of um, opposition in the streets. So we're going to be a, a very authoritarian government, I think so. Just on that point, what can the opposition do to try and combat um, Bolsonaro in the, in the years ahead? Try to create a, a, a real coalition of opposition, but not only in the parliament, not only in the institutional arena, but also in the, uh, in the, in the streets in Brazil. Because now we have the party, the PT, who is going to be most probably uh, interdict, uh, prohibit from, uh, from the political arena. We have a lawsuit that started uh, one week, something like that, against all the heads of the PT to do the same thing that they do with Lula, to put them in jail. So we have that, we have the minor parties, left-wing parties, we have social movements that nowadays are all, all of these actors are a little bit uh, scattered in the social, uh, social scene in Brazil. The, the need is to create a real coalition to stop exactly this kind of authoritarian re response uh, from Bolsonaro. Okay, Glauber, Cesarino, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much for coming Thank and talking to us today on Perspective. Thank you very much.